Yes. Yes. I thought I'd never root for Stan Van Gundy a day in my life, but I am happy he actually said it. Stan Van Gundy, who I think should be remove himself from the NBA head coaching ever, just go and stay in the front office. He's actually the president of basketball for the uh, Detroit Pistons and the head coach. He wants to do both, which I don't think is a good idea. Stay in the front office. Do not come on the court. <laughs> but I'm proud of him today. He has made me immensely proud. Stan Van Gundy called out the NBA and said, you guys need to eliminate the draft and get rid of these max contracts if you want to make a competitive parity type league. And here it is. I'm very proud that he said that. It's a dream, but it's never going to happen because there's never going to be parity in the NBA. It's what they call the nature of the sport. There's always going to be a transcendental type player that dominates one team. There's always going to be the face of the team. And that person is going to be treated as such. He's going to be pampered. And people believe, like Stan Van Gundy believes, he just said, look, if they want to improve the parity, because that's what the league is talking about they're trying to do. And like, we're going to change the lottery draft. That's not going to help anything. We're increasing the odds. It's just a bunch of hot air balloons. Like Stan Van Gundy said, I get rid of the entire draft altogether. You know, we'll just deal with the we'll just deal with the salary cap. Make all rookies free agents coming in, and I want to go give a guy fifty million a year. Good, but I got to do it under the cap. I think if you did that and had no individual max players on the team, we'll start to get some parity in the league. But the league really doesn't want parity. They want super teams. And I get that. It's worked well business-wise. And that's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. It works well business-wise. You see, the way that it's going now, like you just saw Russell Westbrook get that $205 million extension. Um, which would make his base salary around $35 million a season. You know, at least $50 million a season, maybe much more. But let's just look at it. With all the games and stuff, luxury boxes, and, you know, it's like, mm, you know, it, he'll be worth double to any franchise in terms of income. You know, it, it just wouldn't work. There's no way the Warriors could keep Steph Curry, Durant, Draymond Green, Clay. You know, you, you couldn't keep all of them. So to get paid, the superstars would have to spread out. Why this will never happen is it would kill the middle class in the NBA, which means that all the players like Westbrook, um, you know, you got 13 other roster spots under him that wouldn't, that, that means like they got to get $2 million on average. And those good, those good old days of getting an $8 million solid player. Ah, uh, no, that doesn't exist anymore. The players union is not going back to that idea either. See, super teams are what they think is good for business. And the interest in the NBA is the highest it's ever been since Michael Jordan. And when you got LeBron's super teams going up against the Golden State Warriors and all that stuff, that's like what they call the nucleus of the NBA. 
long as they have that interest going and people are interested in it, that's going to make viewership go through the roof for the NBA Finals. So they'll keep staging it as long as we keep buying it. So we're not going to get parody until we fight for parody. And I like that, but I also like that he made it public. Put it out in the public and challenge the NBA on it. He knows the Pistons can't contend for an NBA championship. But don't sandbag the other teams by stacking all these teams together. And you're clearing the way for it. Because it's then you're saying you want to try to stop it when you're really not. It's a red herring. <laughs> and I'm out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button.